Welcome to Fables of Our Deconstruction, a podcast where we examine our systems of faith and culture together as we grow as people. I'm your host, Dylan. If you like what you hear, be sure to check me out at patreon.com slash Dylan. If you'd like to be on a future episode, leave me a message over at 515-318-7569 or find Fables of Our Deconstruction on Anchor FM and send me a voice message. If you want your name shared, include it in your message. Otherwise, I'll keep you anonymous. Now let's deconstruct. <sighs> what a couple of weeks we have been having. First, I want to say that this is the third time I'm going through and recording this episode because each time I felt like my thoughts weren't exactly where they need to be. And I think that that is a good identifier that not only is there a lot going on, but it's probably time that I revisit all of my audio. My goal is by next episode, so in two weeks, there will be a new version of the intro and the outro, and I might be having to write a script every session going forward because I want to make sure my thoughts are concise and proper and in their place because I want to be able to tell you things with my utmost confidence, and I also want to make sure that this deconstruction is constructive if that's even possible, <laughs> to constructively deconstruct something. Uh, because there's a lot going on in our, wor- on our world, and I want to make sure that I'm doing my very best. That being said, it's impossible not to talk about it, so I'm going to bring up the big thing. There was a leaked document, draft document, fr- from our Supreme Court here in the U.S. that looks like it's going to overthrow Roe versus Wade. and that's alarming and horrifying. And I'm a male identifying person. I don't think I'm necessarily someone who can or should be the person to say anything on this topic other than, my God, how dare they even think about infringing on the rights of anyone in this country. And we know that it is largely people who claim to be interested in small government, looking to strip the rights from people who can become pregnant. It's horrifying, and it's sickening, and I know we need to do something. There are countless organizations across the United States, hopefully in your neck of the woods too, that look to do secular activism and... Feminist activism. If you have the ability to join or support any of these organizations, now is the time. One of the arguments that I hear almost constantly is, think about the potential of that life. Uh, That possible life that could come from this fertilized egg. And that's the one thing I want to touch on. Because persistently and constantly, those who wish to remove reproductive and health rights from individuals who can get pregnant, are touting that there is this untapped potential being destroyed when an abortion takes place. But they never, ever reference the amount of potential in that person who could get pregnant and the things their life could be worth, the things they could do, especially things they could accomplish if they have the opportunity to terminate a pregnancy. I'm not going to go into reasons why an abortion can be good because an abortion in and of itself is the pregnant person's choice. And I think that that's difficult for some people because they're jealous and controlling, but ultimately that's the truth. It's not our place to stick our fingers in and ask why or to tell them when or how these things should occur. If we're going to argue for potential, I think we should argue in favor of the potential of the person who's already living and the things they can contribute to our world. That's at least my few cents on this topic. All right, so we actually we're going to move into another like news story, and I never really thought that we would be covering so much topical news, but one of my friends on Twitter sent me a, a, a tweet, 
sent me a tweet that came to my attention. I think it's extremely important that we cover it. This tweet is from Doug Morano. Now, Doug is a fiction writer in South Dakota, and he's he he focuses on horror, right? So I, I want to preface with that. I'm going to read the tweet verbatim, and we're going to move on from there. Here we go. My daughter got in trouble today for drawing a monster at school. They took it away and ripped it up. When I get home, I'm going to ask her to draw one for me. Tomorrow, after I calm down, I'll be making a phone call to the school. Holy crap. <laughs> like, holy crap. This hits me really hard right now. And like I said earlier, I've recorded a couple versions of this episode. And I want to begin by saying one of the primary reasons I'm re-recording is because as I was discussing this particular issue with my wife, she mentioned, hey, you've threatened to rip up kids' work before. And that literally put a lump in my throat. It, I was so upset. And I think for a moment she thought I was upset at her, but I was really upset at myself. Um, I'm going to give you a little context. I work as a resident artist, meaning I'm vetted by the state of South Dakota, and I get to go into classrooms, teach kids how to make comics. Uh, but I've never said like, hey, the, the, the content of your work is appalling. Those goofy things, or at least the intention, I think, at the time was goofy, were, were done because I wanted to see kids work and show me their best. And so many kids, you know, push back. And now the deepest regret I have ever had when it comes to my work in schools is ever even raising the concept of destroying someone's work for any reason. So I want to preface by saying that I have been in a situation where I've said that I would do this, but I have never done it, and I deeply regret having ever said it, because, well, if you go to my website, my Twitter, my Patreon, anything, and you take a look at it, one of my biggest things right now is embracing your inner monster. And this is someone who's young and drew a monster, and for whatever reason was essentially told their work and their ideas were not worthy. If I've ever made someone's ideas seem unworthy, I'm incredibly sorry. And this school district in South Dakota, it bums me out. I mean, it more than bums me out. It pisses me off that there's a teacher out there that would do this. But unfortunately, we do live in a time where people are still telling others what's valuable and what's not. And what's an okay idea? One of this, one of the goals of this podcast is to deconstruct good and evil. And to sort of take a step back and say, what the hell are we doing here? And I'm trying to embrace the ideas of benefit versus harm instead of good versus evil. And I'm realizing that I've been on the wrong side of this like, very issue for different reasons. And now here I am doing figure art of characters that are demonic drawing big monsters in the woods to go to a monster festival, embracing places that have claimed to see monsters and working with them to create renditions of said creatures. So monsters are deeply rooted in who I am. And I realize the hypocrisy that I've been a part of. And I realize the difficulty and the struggle that's going on in my home state of South Dakota. Now I live in Iowa right now, but I still work with the state. And all I can think is, what kind of situation would it be if they invited me in, the guy who's coming to teach you how to make comics, and we talk about fantasy role-playing on day one, like I almost always do, and kids will be dealing with zombies or goblins, and they may be encouraged to draw these things as the week goes on. What kind of reaction would a teacher have from me, the person who's supposed to come in and bring them comics? Because comics are not divorced from monsters, and storytelling isn't either. Monsters are you know, around us constantly, and as we've progressed as people, we've begun to deconstruct what a monster even is, and sometimes the thing that is ugly or frightening isn't the monster at all, it's the people around us. And I think that Doug's story that he's sharing on Twitter and other social media is incredibly powerful. To make this even more powerful, Doug has decided to take this to another step. And this is the part that I'm really excited for. 
his children, Franny and Ava, want to fund five arts scholarships via the Brookings Arts Council. The Brookings Arts Council in South Dakota is doing amazing things. They're probably one of the most active arts councils, if not the most, in South Dakota. They're trying to sell stickers of his children's monsters on his website, badhandbooks.com. Uh, so you can either find him at Bad Hand Books or at Murano Fiction on Twitter, which is M-U-R-A-N-O-F-I-C-T-I-O-N on Twitter. Now, the stickers cost you $5. That's pretty normal for stickers, as someone who sells things at conventions can tell you. Uh, that's a really reasonable price. They're illustrated by his kids. They're super cool, extremely fun, and a portion of all those sales are going to go to generating these art scholarships. And I think this is critical at any time in South Dakota, because if you're unaware, many schools in South Dakota have no art program at all. Now, I know that's probably not the case for Brookings on the whole, but there are kids in South Dakota where when someone like me comes into the school for one week, that's their entire program. So to know that this unfortunate experience that had to happen, un like, I am so torn up that this happened at all to Doug's kids. Um, the fact that he's able to help them spin it into something positive and constructive is amazing. When we look at the ideas of deconstruction and taking apart the things that our society is putting in front of us and the behavior we're expected to have versus the behavior we might actually think is beneficial in the world, Doug's doing amazing work. And I think if he's able to put this kind of work out there, imagine what his kids are able to do, especially as they progress through life. Don't be afraid to grab life by the lips and yank as hard as you can, <laughs> to quote Weird Al. Uh, and, and just take a look at what we're doing. If you look at someone's work and decide that it's somehow evil or frightening or inappropriate and you are inclined to destroy that work, I think you need to set it down, <laughs> set that work down, and take a step back and ask yourself why. Why is this important for me to destroy something so I made, especially a young person? It's hard for me to wrap my mind around. And as someone who has used the threat of destruction, I'm sorry. And I will not do that again. And if there's any way we can change the landscape of arts and communication in South Dakota, I think we're off to a good track with Doug and his kids. So... I really wanted to cover this. It's extremely important to me. And I think that this in and of itself is a story of deconstruction happening right before our eyes. This has been Fables of Our Deconstruction. Fables of Our Deconstruction is created by me, Dylan Jacobson. Don't forget, leave a like and review wherever you listen to your podcasts. You can also support me and all of my work and join my community, the Brimstone Order, at patreon.com slash Dylan. And remember, you're never alone. We are in this together. <laughs>